Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Hi Kelly. Hey Marsha. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Pretty soon it's going to be past my bedtime, though. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we agreed that we were going to record at 7 tonight, yes. but we had such a long conversation prior to, we had, as we always call it, the podcast um, before the podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> that we're just now, it's, uh, what is it, 8-11. Yeah. And we're just now sitting down to record. So we'll make it... Uh, should we try to be sort of succinct? And oh, to we can try, them? but I don't know if we'll be <laughs> successful. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I do have to, I just have to say one thing, though, before it is about the puppy. Oh, Not yeah. Not my puppy. But my friend Kim that I went to Scotland with um, got a new puppy. And it was really fun when we were in Scotland. Her Well, let me just back up and say the original plan is that she was going to get the mother. The mother is four, and that was the original plan. But the breeder decided, changed her mind, decided that she's going to have another litter with the mother. And Kim decided that she didn't want to um, get a dog and then have to send it back for breeding. Um, she didn't want to do that. So yeah. after much thinking, and then, of course, this is the worst part. I mean, this is <laughs> I think the best part, the worst part. I don't know. We went up uh, the beginning of August and saw the puppies. But, well, the point was to meet the mother, but we also saw the puppies. And Kelly, what happens to you when you see puppies? What is the some? You go puppy crazy. Yeah, there's like a oxytocin. Some is that what it is? <laughs> I almost said oxycontin, but that's not right. <laughs> Maybe it works the same way. It, whatever well, that whatever that thing is is that you your your hormones do that makes mothers attached to mm -hmm. their babies that happens that happens with puppies that happens with puppies when you hold a puppy yes when you smell puppy breath oh my <laughs> god well anyway i don't even know what that puppy. feeling is with a child but i do have that feeling with puppies i've never mm. been one of those people who were like oh babies oh i mean i like kids yeah i like i mean i like babies but i've never but i've never i mean honestly swooned over babies yeah but I mean, I liked I liked my baby, you mm -hmm. know. But I think, but which is good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, right? <laughs> Thank God, I liked my baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, I have never, I, I have never swooned over babies, or like people talk about the the milk breath that babies have. I like how no. squishy they are when they're first born. Like, they're just yeah. all, like, a sack of... Well, I will say, sometimes when I see babies in strollers, and they got those little, that rolls of fat on yeah. their necks, and mm -hmm. their little fat legs. Ooh, those little fat legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't but, um, ever have that feeling. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but anyway. But with puppies, yes. Yes, yeah. Anyway, and the, oh my gosh. So anyway, she got a puppy... Uh, a male. He's 12 weeks old, and he is, and I hope I'm pronouncing pronouncing this correctly, he's a Legato Romagnolo. Probably, which is I would say Romagnolo. Rom, okay. Just because, like, champagne, the G-N sound in Italian. Oh, yeah, you're right. Champagne. Yeah. Anyway. And Anyway, an Italian dog that they, in Italy, they use, uh, what, what, this is what the story is, they use them for hunting truffles. So I've been teasing Kim that she's going to start a side job. <laughs> of hunting truffles? <laughs> yeah, if, I don't know if we have those in the Pacific Northwest, but they anyway. They do have he, nose work classes, though. Yes. I, I've yeah. seen a lot of that. That's something new. I mean, they had trailing, I think it was called trailing, that I always wanted to do with my dogs when I was doing like obedience trials and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 
but now they have something it's and i guess it's pretty popular called nose work where you can take mm-hmm. classes and do competitions and stuff yeah the where i'm doing the training for agility they do nose work okay. or scent i guess they call it scent work but it's okay. the same thing yeah you know yeah well anyway he came home on he she picked him up on saturday and at the airport at SeaTac, because the breeder lives up on the Olympic Peninsula, and she had four dogs, four puppies that were going to new homes. So she just went to the airport because three of the people had flown in from other parts of the country to pick up their puppies, oh, wow. and they were going to fly them home with them. So Kim was the only one that was local, is my understanding. So anyway, she went down and picked up her puppy, and it's been um, an interesting. It's been a. It's been. Um, what would be the word? <laughs> I don't. I want to say rough. Um, it, it, you know, someone who's. I mean, and Kim's very open. I mean, she's really done a lot of reading. She's asking a lot of questions, and she's already figured a lot out since Saturday. Yeah. But um, you know, she's always had cats, and she's always had older cats. Um, so now she's got a dog and a puppy, and so she really today Saturday night was really rough said that Saturday night was rough and Sunday night was really rough but she said I mon- last night Monday because this is Tuesday Monday night she said he slept through the night he was in his crate no yeah, crying that's good. everything was great it was just really settling down and she's getting more sort of a, a I, I think a, a sense of what you know you she was listening to what the breeder was telling her to do but now she's in her own home she's figuring out more intuitively what yeah she needs what's to do, gonna I work think. for her um what's gonna work for her yeah anyway but his name uh his name is orkney because what he was born when we were um in scotland on the orkney islands oh that's cool. and we were watching the the pu- they the breeder had a puppy cam so we kept watching the puppy and <laughs> She was thinking of, she was trying to think of all these names and sort of like Italian sounding boy's name and and then she just came, she we were having um, I was over at her house for something and she said I just thought of the name Orkney because he was you know born while we were on the Orkney Islands so anyway that's his name and he's very cute and I got to I got to puppy sit today uh, oh, so fun. she worked she worked from home yesterday but today she had to go into work for a meeting so I was with him for about three hours. And, um, yeah, and he was perfect. He slept and he went potty when I told him to go potty and, <laughs> and he, and he's not really interested in treats. He just was excited to just get petted yeah. and praised. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, really fun, really fun to have a, uh, a puppy mm-hmm. around, um, that's not living with me. Right. <laughs> well, I have to say, but, I, some of my most favorite times that I can remember were times raising puppies. I mean, I raised mm-hmm. Jenny and Shigatsu together. Shigatsu was a, uh, a dog that belonged to a friend of mine and he got her about a month before I got, before we got Jenny mm-hmm. and it was right before the summer. And so I spent all summer and, okay, this is a little bit weird. I, I don't have children and people who do have children probably don't like it when you compare having puppies to having children, but well, it doesn't bother me because I've had a child and I have ha- and I had a puppy. So well, and I, I I think there's so many it, similarities. It w- it's kind of shocking to me how many yeah, similarities so it was there the are. Same, I mean, I imagine it was the same feeling. Like, it was so fun to just have my schedule mm-hmm. revolve around what was happening with the puppies. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't have to think about, was I going to go out and do yard work? Or was I going to do this or do that? It's like okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to feed the puppies and Paul's going to drop off Shigatsu Mm -hmm. and then they're going to play for a while and then they're going to nap for an hour. And then Mm -hmm. once they nap for an hour, then we'll figure out what fun thing we're going to do to socialize them for the next two hours. And then they're going to nap for like Mm -hmm. two hours. And like my whole day was just all arranged around the puppies. And then I did it again for, well, for our dogs. Um, And then I raised somebody else's puppy when... After Robert's mom died, his sister bought his dog, his dad, a dog for Christmas. Mm. She died at Thanksgiving, and and his sister brought his dad a dog at Christmas Eve, and so then they. Oh, I never heard oh, this yeah. story. And, <laughs> and they came. Oh so gosh. then, then everybody came. We invited them. We were having a brunch 
that year on Christmas Day, Christmas morning. And so they, they went to Christmas Eve with, um, you know, one part of Robert's family and they had Christmas Eve. And then the next morning they came to our house for a brunch and brought the dog. And Robert's dad was just sort of beside himself about not wanting the dog. And so, so he left it with me. Mm -hmm. to train so I trained the dog for him so I kept her for uh, long enough for her to be spayed so six months we mm -hmm. had her and I like all through Christmas break and then you know I took her to work with me in the in the van in the crate and took her out and walked her during breaks and did some training took her to I don't know if I took her to puppy to puppy class I can't remember but anyway uh, and then he never ended up taking her. Robert's sister took her after I was done training her. But, but yeah, I mean that was so fun. And then I found the pit bull Hank that that mm -hmm. showed up in our in our court, and I raised him. And so yeah, I I used to like raising puppies. I I do think about all the hardship part of raising puppies now and think, oh, mm. I'm a little old for that. I don't know, but. I really liked it back when I did a lot yeah. of puppy raising. It was really fun. And just like kind of letting your schedule go to what the mm -hmm. puppy needs to do. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. So fun for Kim. I know. And it was fun to um, go hang out with the puppy today and then and then be able to leave too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's very cute. So should we... I think the first thing we need to just talk about before we get into projects, let's just a reminder of the save the date for the Seabrook yeah. Washington yes. meetup. So, so um, it's it's just a reminder. It's um, Seabrook Washington on the Washington coast. It's um, September twentieth through twenty second, and we're going to be meeting at uh, String Theory Yarn and Fiber. Um, and there's in, there's information on the, our group, um, mm -hmm. and there's also a, an RSVP. I say that again, RSVP form, and um, we're just asking if you are, know you're going to come, just let us know so we can make sure we have enough uh, goodie yeah. bags for everybody. Um, yeah, there's a link so. to the RSVP form in the show notes. So if you're listening mm -hmm. on your phone in your podcast app, you can go right to the show notes and just click into the form or you can find it in the Ravelry group mm -hmm. I posted it two places there's a, a thread that I started called Washington Coast Meetup and it's right at the top stickied um, and it's so I posted it in there but I also put it at the very top of that thread so no matter what page of the thread you're on if you just look at the top of the page you'll see the link to the RSVP form so there's a few different ways to find it the show notes and then two different places in the washington coast meetup uh thread in the ravelry group and in you can come for the weekend or if you don't have time you can just come for the yeah. day um, it's going to start on friday night with a little get together at the shop and then continue on saturday with knitting in the shop and then we kind of don't know how Sunday's going to go because people are going to have to be probably getting getting back. But I'm sure there will be time for a walk on the beach or say goodbye or something on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, yeah. So, um, Kelly, um, projects. Yes. Should we talk sure. projects? Who wants to go well, first? I can go first because mine is really short. Okay. So I... <laughs> My biggest project right now is healing my foot. But mm -hmm. that still means I'm spending some time with my foot up in the air, even though, you know, I'm doing physical therapy and stuff. But I did swatch for a cardigan that I want to mm -hmm. make. It's called the Marianas or Marianne's. It doesn't have an apostrophe, mm -hmm. but Marianne's cardigan. That's how it's spelled. M-A-R-I-A-N-N-E-S cardigan by Trina Bertelson and I found this pattern I was doing a search for my gauge which is like 30 stitches per inch or something ungodly like that <laughs> wait a minute say that again 36 stitches no, per yeah, inch? It, what did no, you say? it's 30 stitches it's not per inch it's per four inches 
Oh, okay. But it's still, that's a really tight gauge. It's on size three mm -hmm. needles. And I swatched for it actually before I went up to Seattle, thinking that mm -hmm. this would be good deck knitting. And then after finishing the Karoo cardigan on size three needles, I just couldn't bear to start another project on size three needles. So, mm -hmm. but it's a really cute cardigan. It has a crochet yoke and a crochet button band and crochet sleeve edging. I'm going to modify mm -hmm. it to be a pullover so I won't use the button band. It's mm -hmm. going to be like a T. So I have to start with the crochet. That's another reason I didn't bring it to Washington. I have to start with the crochet uh, and I'm going to do a contrasting color, which is a variegated sort of green and purpley, b green, blue, and purple kind of mermaid color mm -hmm. is going to be my yoke. Mm -hmm. And then the, the actual um, cardigan, main part of the cardigan is going to be this sort of uh, purpley blue color. So mm -hmm. it's a it's the blue heron Egyptian mercerized cotton and it was the yarn that that Tracy Little Town Knitter brought to the Knockers retreat for me. So it's a it's a spirit mm -hmm. yarn sweater. So I haven't started. I've just swatched. I got gauge with size three needles. I'm sort of I maybe I'll wait to start it when the uh, the two knitlet chicks have their sweater their fall sweater knit along. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not really a fall, it's not like a winter sweater, but, but I could wear a tee anytime. Mm -hmm. So, cute pattern. Not something I had seen before. Not a lot of projects. So. I like the um, idea of combining crochet. And yeah, knitting. I did too. I, I was really intrigued mm -hmm. by the pattern. So, and then, so that's in the, like, kind of like future knitting. And then I also joined the, um, I joined the gnome addiction that people are having mm -hmm. with Sarah Shira's patterns. She has a mystery knit along called Oh Gnome You Didn't. <laughs> and um, so I, I should be starting that in September. I couldn't resist. I, I have resisted up to this point, but my mom, I don't know, do you, did you know my mom has like a theme every year for Christmas? Oh, no, I did Well, actually, I yeah. think I did, yeah. So her theme this year is gnomes. So mm -hmm. I decided I'll, I'll do this one and maybe I'll get gnome crazy and make a whole bunch of gnomes. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. I'm at least going to make the one. And then I've yeah. been making baby socks and baby mm -hmm. socks and more baby socks. So I have seven pairs of baby socks that I finished. Wow. Yeah. They're fast and they're good for when you don't have a real project. <laughs> well, and did we, I don't remember, we, maybe we mentioned it in the last episode when we were talking about ways to use up yeah. um, mm -hmm. so baby socks. That's yeah, it. they're a good way. Because you just use a, just your sock yeah. scraps, you know, it's perfect and for that. a long time ago, I was interested in doing the beekeeper's quilt with all those mm -hmm. hexi puffs. And I mm -hmm. saw at Monarch, this was before it was sold to Anne, um, they had a jar on the counter with hexi puffs in it. And I thought, oh, that mm. would be so cool. I could make all these hexi puffs and can make this beekeeper's quilt. And then I was like, don't be crazy. That's an unfinished project waiting to happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I resisted. And then my aunt bought me two jars, one for the yarn and one for the finished baby socks. Mm -hmm. So I, I was looking on my Ravelry page. It, so far, well, on my Ravelry page, Ravelry page are 15 pairs of baby socks and I have <laughs> three more that I haven't put in there yet. Wow. So that's 18 pairs of baby socks. I thought there would have been more than that, but they're a great baby gift. So mm -hmm. I, I said Just that Just time time. on the package. Yeah. You know? So I have, yeah. and I have a colleague who's going out on maternity leave in October so I think I'm going to just bring her a bag of baby socks and put it on her desk one mm -hmm. of these days. So, And then I have another colleague who is had her second granddaughter. So I, I, think, I'll make a, I think I'll make a little sweater for, for her granddaughter and then add a pair of socks to the mix. So. Mm -hmm. But that's, my, yeah. that's the sum total of my projects. Nothing very exciting. Well, 
you've been working on a bigger knitting project, which is knitting your foot back oh, together. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, I, I should yeah. tell you, I did call to order the yarn for the Sunny Bono jacket. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I can sleep at night now. <laughs> when I called Amazing Yarns, uh, the guy I talked to, he said that they didn't have any in, but they were supposed to get some in about two weeks, and it would be probably from a different goat. Mm. And so he, he, and I said, well, I have another skein. And so I can alternate skeins for the sleeves. I don't think that'll be a problem. But then he suggested that I send him a piece of my yarn, which I did today. Mm -hmm. And then, so when he gets them in, he's going to take out the piece of my yarn, compare it to the skein he has, take a picture and send it to me. And then, um, you know, we can correspond and, and I can tell him what I think. I think it'll be fine. Okay. I'm not worried. But, mm -hmm. but he wanted to make sure I got the color that I wanted. Well, I'm glad that's what yeah. works because it, was, it was weighing on my mind, Kelly. I know. Well, <laughs> it got put in the bag and then it was, you know, in the bag I bought it in. I worked on it a lot, but then I stuffed it into the bag that I bought it in. Then I broke my foot. And then we moved a whole bunch of stuff into the living room because of all the stuff that's happening with the electrical work and now the painting. And mm -hmm. um, the bag got sort of stuffed behind, you know, beside the couch in a place where I couldn't see it and out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. But no, it's back. It's back well, on the it's back on the docket as soon as I get my yarn. So. Mm -hmm. So what about you? I'm sure your project th uh, project portion is a lot more interesting than mine well i'm excited because i have finished objects <laughs> oh break out the champagne <laughs> oh that's right <laughs> so and i actually i do get to bottle the champagne because i have uh two sweaters here two sweaters so I finished, wow uh, woohoo well okay a t-shirt so and maybe this is not fair because the same one that do you remember a couple episodes ago i said oh, i right. finished the this is like a lace market. second finish Yes, I get two bottles of champagne because it's the second finish. <laughs> um, no, anyway, we talked about this, that it was uh, the neckline was way too big um, so that the it was actually sort of beginning to fall off my shoulders. So I ripped it out. I did it yesterday. Is that right? Yeah, yesterday. And um, picked up, I went down another needle size, fewer stitches. And then the other thing is it was when you, the the neckline you're supposed to do, uh, three rows of stockinette uh -huh. and then bind off. And I found that it, it curled forward, yeah. you know, like it curled away yeah. from your body. And then you could see the line of um, the fabric where you, you know, when you pick up the stitches, you get a line of right the, un the ugly stitches mm -hmm. kind of in the back, kind of the... And those were showing because it would it would roll the, wrong way. For, the roll forward, so then you could see those the back. those stitches. Yeah. So um, I, as I say, smaller needles, fewer stitches picked up, and I did three rows of reverse stockinette. So now it rolls towards my body. Oh, good. And it and it covers up the um, any unsightly, ugly <laughs> big dub stitches yarn. Yeah. And then when I bound off, I, so let me, try, so if you were knitting on the right side of the fabric, right? So you're doing reverse stockinette. What I did is then I turned the project inside out and I knit back or not knit. I, um, I cast off knit wise, mm -hmm. but on the wrong yeah. side. So then it ended up looking like a purl stitch. So I like casting it looks much off better. purl wise, which is the yeah. same thing as turning it around and casting off knit wise yeah. on the inside. Yeah. I like and, the way that okay, looks. This is, and, you know, and you know what? You know why I did that? Is I thought, can't, I, this is what I'm, last night at like 10 o'clock at night, I'm thinking to myself, can you, can you bind off pearl wise? Oh, I'll just turn it inside out and you, <laughs> do it knit wise. You can, but it's a pain. I never thought of just turning oh, it inside yeah. out and binding off knit wise. That makes more sense. That would be yeah. easier. Well, and you go, and but you have to go back. You know, you have to go the opposite direction. Though. Yeah, but so you do have like a little, a little gap, gap. But you, you can sew, sew it up. up. That's but, no problem. Yeah, yeah. 
So anyway, I wore it today and I love it. It fits very well. It's, it's, um, so now the neckline is perfect. Um, and it's a very sort of loose, open t-shirt. It's very comfortable. I like it a lot. So I would recommend that pattern. So that's Lace Market t-shirt by Marie Green. And then I finished the Shoppel Wool Dust Par, uh-huh. the socks that, uh, there's a, you know, that they turn out exactly the same and they turned out pretty much the same. Okay. It's funny, even though I cast on exactly the same spot, maybe just having one row yeah. less, maybe for doing the gusset or something, the toes are a little different. Yeah. It's interesting. Even if your gauge just slightly changes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you wanted perfectly matched socks, you should just buy machine, you know, machine, go buy machine made sh- socks, right? You want hand knits. You want imperfection because mm-hmm. they're... Well, I know of people who have ripped back when the toes aren't oh, the really? same, who rip back and then finagle mm-hmm. them to get this, the toes to look to look no. the same. But no, now I think... I'm looking I'm at your project page right now and they, they match really well. Yeah. It's only just the very, very tip that you can tell and that will be inside your shoe. Yeah, really. I mean, I'm looking at them now too. Yeah, they match. It's maybe two rows or one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, and then um, I finished the Cardigan Fine Sand by Heidi Kermeyer. And that was the Fibra Natura Unity, which I think is like wool and cotton and alpaca. And it says all mm, these that different. That looks really nice. It has like four different. And that fits great. Yeah, I'm seeing it on, and, your, on your project page. Not on you, but on Blythe. Yeah, I, I put it on Blythe, yes. <laughs> it looks really nice. It it fits great. It's really comfortable to wear because it has a little bit of wool. It has a little bit of cotton. I think those fibers together, I think they super mm-hmm. comfortable. And it has a, the yarn. We've talked about this before, too. It has some texture yeah. to it, some thick and thin yeah. parts, which when I before I washed and blocked it, it was very lumpy. And it, th- those have smoothed out a lot, but it still has some um, interest to it. Yeah. You know? It's not just flat. It's kind of, it has, yeah, it's anyway, nice. but I think I, I really, the fabric is really nice. and I, I like the way it fits too, because do you remember um, my gauge was not exactly right? So I made a smaller oh, right. size and that worked out perfectly. Nice. It fits really well. So, um, uh, here's to, here's a, let's have a bottle of champagne and toast math. <laughs> oh, now that's math. always good. Yeah, yeah. Math works. I'll tell my students yeah. tomorrow that we uh, we toasted math. <laughs> yeah, we toasted math. Um, anyway, and then I have, uh, well, I've cast on another pair of socks. And this was yarn that I bought. Actually, I looked on Ravelry and I bought it in 2015, so four years ago. But I'm using stash, good, yeah. using up my stash. That's good. So just casting on a pair of just what we call them vanilla socks for my brother, and I'm using it's. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Like shock, shock and Meyer. Meyer. Mm-hmm. Re- okay, Regia mm-hmm. Design Line by Arnie. Oh and Carlos, yeah, the, yeah. And so and the oh I forgot I didn't write down the Fall name. Fall night. It's. it's I'm looking at your yes. project page. It's the fall night colorway. I don't think I have a picture in there yet, do no. I? I have, I have three projects on there now that don't have pictures yet, but I will tell you about them. Um, so I ca- these are going to be for, my, for Mark because the last pair of socks I made for him, the, um, you know, the afterthought heel mm-hmm. socks, I, when I made those, I measured his foot. And that's exactly, I think I was getting eight stitches to the inch. So I made them, I think he's, I think he was nine and a half inches around. You know, it was like nine and a half inches around his foot. So I cast on enough stitches for nine and a half inches, oh, forgetting no that my, my vanilla sock pattern, you know, my, just the sock pattern, it's a formula is you have to make it a uh, half inch smaller. Right. So they're too big. They're very baggy socks. On him. So baggy <laughs> socks. Yeah, and he's he wears me, loves them, but he said they're kind of loose. And I didn't tell him. I, I thought he doesn't need to know that I right, made a mistake. Right. Um, and a lot less knitting if I put it right. Yeah. If I cast on mm-hmm. the correct. I mean, a half. How many? I, I cast mean, on seventy-two for Robert's socks. 
Yeah, I cast on. I'm, I do sixty eight for me, and I figured and seventy two for him. Yeah. And because if you're getting eight stitches to the inch, four inches is a, four stitches is a half an inch. Okay. But four stitches over that yeah. horrible tube <laughs> that I did, that's a lot of that's knitting. That's right. Extra yeah, knitting no, that, that is a lot of extra knitting. Yeah. Robert complains but, in um, his, well, I shouldn't say complains, that's not, critiques that mm-hmm. his socks are baggy a lot of the time, that his socks yeah. are baggy. But he wears his socks with more negative ease than anybody I know. <laughs> his <laughs> socks are so they're like as tight as the compression sleeve that I wear on my ankle. <laughs> oh my goodness. He likes his socks to be really <laughs> tight. So so well. yeah, I'm gonna have to the next pair I make him, I'm gonna have to make sure I really crank him down a little. <laughs> but this one I decided I like doing the um the heels and toes in a, in a contrasting uh-huh. color. So I went over to the yarn shop. I didn't have anything. I had some gray, but I wanted something brighter because Mark does like really yeah. bright colors. And so this has, it has like a red and a, a like a, an orange, like a tomato soup, oh, uh-huh. you know, Campbell's tomato soup color. So I got some uh, red, sort of that color nice. for the heels and the toes. And then my other project, and this is what I worked on today while I was puppy sitting, is Kelly, do you remember a number of years ago I made a t-shirt? It was called, it's called the Nesquin Shell oh, yeah. by Kay Hopkins. Mm-hmm. It was kind of a and, tape um, yarn. Is that right? Um, no. It, well, the, the linen that I just used is sort of like a tape yarn. No, this was not a tape yarn. It was it was plied. It has all different colors. Kind it has like a... On the orange side? Like orange okay. and blue and... I do remember it. Has all it, these different yeah. colors. But the overall look sort of is like beige kind of, but then you start looking at it and it has all these different colors. And it's really... That doesn't sound very pretty, but it's very pretty yarn. Anyway, the Nesco and Shell, and I put a, I, I put a link to it in the... the show notes because oh. i think i might make it sometime i remember, remember? i'm it was looking like at the pattern page stitch. right now yes i remember this it's one. like garter stitch over the shoulders and then from like the you know mid chest kind of down it was this um drop stitch mm-hmm. pattern so it's really open and i was it struggling sort of with that. these lozenge what we call lozenges mm-hmm. in weaving sort of these lozenge yeah. shaped openings yeah. So anything I'm going to say about the pattern, I'm now going to say this is n- the designer is Kay Hopkins. This is nothing negative about her pattern. It was all me. I could not do it. It was so struggling to get the y- the needle through the yarn as on those drops, the stitches that you you would wrap around. How did like it go? Three I think you times wrapped or something. Yeah, or something. I don't know. I could not. I was really struggling with it, and I thought. And then I got worried. I thought it's going to be too mm-hmm. open and I don't really want to wear a shell underneath it like everybody was doing. So I decided I just won't put that drop stitch pattern, whatever it is in there. I'll just do stock right. in it. And so I even went and bought another skein of yarn and it's still, I thought I've never worn it because it's too uh, dense a knit mm-hmm. the way I knit it. It was too dense. It was for a cotton. It's it's too heavy and yeah. dense. It's actually hot. I should have just made persevered and made hers because there would have been all those openings <laughs> right, right. here to go through. You had ventilation. Um, <laughs> and I and it's funny because a lot more people have made that the Nesquin shell now, and I think I probably should go back and make it the right way because it really is. I cute. think people and made I it. Think, I'm just going to put this out there. I think people have oh. made it because they heard of you you making it. Oh. <laughs> Well, now I think I owe it to Kay Hopkins to actually make the it right the right way. way. But it's anyway, cute. Yeah, the right it's way. Cute. Maybe I'll make it's it. It's super cute. Anyway, the yarn is uh, Debbie Bliss Juliet. And so what I did today is I ripped the whole thing apart. I, I yeah. unraveled the whole sweater okay. because I've not worn, I don't know. Okay, so what's my project page? When did I finish that? How many no, years I ago did I make that? I just left off your project page. Let me look. Okay, I completed uh, May of 2015. Okay, so it was so, I've, so it was our first spring podcasting. It was the yeah. first year during the first year. Oh, here yeah. it is. So frogged. Yeah, I I did it on fours, size four needles. So I took it all apart, and what I'm going to make, I'm going to make the lounging top by uh, Yohi Locatelli. Ho, ho and he. it's just a sim- oh, Gosh <laughs> darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, my apologies. <laughs> yes, thank you for correcting You're me. You're welcome. <laughs> and it's just a stockinette um, uh, top, but it's on size sevens. So it's going to be a lot drapier yeah. and less stiff than what That'll I That'll be nice and, for that um, yarn, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to cast that on probably this week. Um, but as I say, today was just all about ripping it apart. And then, now uh, don't judge me on this, this next <laughs> okay. project. Um, <laughs> so do you remember um, Ben's former girlfriend? They're no longer together. She's back in Maine, and she texted me. When I was in Scotland, I got a text from her that she got a job in, of all places, Antarctica. So she's oh going to gosh. Antarctica in October. I don't know what she's going to do. She's actually coming through Seattle in, um, I'm going to see her right before we go down to the Washington coast. She's coming through Seattle. So she's, I'll find out what she's going to be doing in Antarctica. But she's going there in, I think, the beginning of October. So she texted me and asked if I would knit her a sweater. And no, (laughs) you do not knit sweaters for ex-girlfriends. You don't even necessarily knit sweaters for girlfriends. And Betty made me a sweater, that Mm -hmm. that family circle one. I I liked it. It was in the family circle magazine. This was in Mm -hmm. when I was in high school in the 70s. And right. I, at Thanksgiving at my grandma's, I saw it and I said I liked it. She went home and bought the yarn and knitted it for me before Christmas. Big heavy mm-hmm. cable sweater with a hood. Robert liked it and he wanted one. She would not knit one for him until he saw, she saw a ring on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he married you? Uh, maybe, because he did get the sweater. <laughs> But she was like, uh-uh, no, no sweater. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, everybody, it was funny because I thought I, I, well, the main thing is I couldn't, I couldn't commit to a yeah, sweater. I yeah. mean, and I'm not, it was, I, I was not going to make her a sweater. And, but it's so funny. Everybody's like, you are not making her a sweater. <laughs> but I really like her. Yeah. I really like her. And it didn't work out between the two of them. They're fine. Right, the two of right. them are fine. You know, they speak and everything. So I thought, I want to make her something. So I said to her, I will make you a hat. Oh, that's nice. So I, yeah. So I found, I just was, and I wanted something with worsted weight. And I, so I just, you know, that's the great thing about Ravelry is you say, this is the weight mm-hmm. of yarn I want. And I want one color and I, you know, uh, and it, it's an adult hat and everything. Anyway, so the hat I'm going to make, and it's really interesting. It's called um, the 1898 hat by I've Christine Burns. i this, yeah. From, there's a website called the Siemens Church Institute and... This is a whole series of patterns, I guess, called Christmas at Sea. And my understanding is that people are knitting hats that are then donated to oh, um, yeah. people who are, are, are working mm-hmm, at sea. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I thought this is kind of cool because I don't know how she's an adventurer, right? right she's going yeah. off to Antarctica. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if she's going by boat or she's going by plane, but, um, and it's, uh, so I thought that was really kind of cool, the fact that it's for, you know, sailors. Yeah. Sailors mm-hmm. or adventurers, you know. Um, the yarn I got is, um, I went over and I did not use anything from the Goodwill. Or <laughs> <laughs> I actually went and bought yarn. And I bought Hazel Knits uh, oh, Cadence. Nice. And um, because Hazel Knits is dyed in mm-hmm. Seattle. And she lived in Seattle for a while. So I thought that it was really nice, nice to have the Seattle... Con- keepsake for her. The nice... Yeah, yeah. And the colorway is this beautiful green called Woodland. And um, But the hat is really interesting. And I was looking at the pattern. And I'm going to have to... It's not one of those things that I can um, start in a crowd. I'm going to have to sit by myself, I think. It's... It's garter stitch. It, it's actually um, shaped. You know, it has like ear yeah, flaps. Yeah, I'm looking at the pattern. Kind of, and it has garter stitch around. So it's um, you you instead of knitting it from the uh, um, like from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom, you actually do a provisional cast on and you knit around the head. Mm-hmm. But you but you do a slip stitch in there somehow. And this is what I am talking about this, and I've not actually done it, so I may be wrong on this. But you do something to so that you eventually fold this um, uh, garter stitch piece in half 
So, and then you pick up those two, yeah. where those two so selvages double, meet, then you're going to pick up and knit. Yeah, so it'll, so where it is going to be around the ears, it will be yeah. double. So, which will be really good for, um, nice. I'm assuming even in, um, so she's going to be there October, November, December, January, you know, our winter months, but it's their mm-hmm. summer. But I imagine even the summer yeah. in Antarctica is yeah. pretty cold. So, um, oh, no, that looks good. And I thought it would, I thought it's really interesting hat, and um, so that's what I'm going to cast on next. And then once you've um, made it, I'm looking at the project pages right now. There's four thousand one hundred ten projects. Yeah, and then if you look at them, people it's like all a kinds blank of things canvas. Color. Yeah, it's like a, so. Yeah. I'm looking at the yeah. most recently finished one, or the one that's that's first on the project page. Maybe it's not the most recently finished one, but it's. Uh, the ear flap part is just plain red, and then there's like a Latvian mm-hmm. braid separating the ear yes. flap part, and then the rest mm-hmm. of it's buffalo plaid, red and black. Super cute. Yeah. And then yes. there's another one that's uh, got that same design, but it's a like a black and white or gray and white buffalo plaid design. And then there's another one yeah. with color work. Okay, yeah. You could get like crazy with this pattern. Yeah, no, I think you could just go nuts. Well, and I was going to say also going back to our other our our previous podcast about using up stash. This would be a great Mm -hmm. way to use up stash. And um, and then since I'm we're on the topic of this hat, let me go to my favorites here because I I didn't I was reading the pattern and I don't understand how to. uh, I know I'm doing a provisional cast on, but I. I, I have to really sit down and study it because I, I, it's probably one of, those, one of those things that once I do it, it'll yeah, make total sense to, to me. The but pattern. just reading it, it mm-hmm. doesn't make it doesn't make any sense to me. But I, so I went on the, you know, you've told me you can look at a pattern, then you can look at like blog posts and discussions oh, mm-hmm. about the hat. So I found there is another hat called the Ear Cozy Cap, and if you put in, um, um, this is if I got this one right. Yes. If you go to on your like your phone where you you can search you have uh, the app store where you can find all mm-hmm. your apps. If you put in the ear cozy cap in your apps, there's an app just for the hat <laughs> and it will <laughs> I know. And um but it'll give in and I I didn't I haven't done it yet, but it, apparently the discussion was it's it's very similar to the um the 1898 mm-hmm. hat that I'm going to make. But this app lets you put in um, like the exact size of of head that you're making oh my it for, um, and so you can modify yeah. the hat with by. So I think that would, if anyone's interested in making the 1898 hat, you can also look at this ear cozy yeah. cap. Um, and it, the ear cozy cap it says by the knit fitter. Well, and I don't know who and that is. I'm looking at but, somebody's project page right now and how you how you make the sort of double layer for the bottom. Mm -hmm. You could even, when you make, if you wanted to, if you needed to, when you make that double layer, you could actually, like, stitch in a little extra in the little Mm -hmm. bumps that go back, that go down over your ears. So not only do you have two layers of wool, but you could have a layer of something else in there, too. I mean, you could Mm -hmm. make it really cozy on the ears. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this sounds fun. You'll have to make an extra one mm-hmm. to bring to like the to the knockers retreat for the um the hat, the Franciscan brothers. Oh hat right, thing. yeah. Just because I well, want to see one. I, I want to see one that's already made, you know, in person. Yeah. Well and if you go to this um Siemens Church mm-hmm. Institute, if you well if you just go to the um because we'll put a link to the hat. But then, you know, it says publish in the Seaman Church Institute Christmas at Sea. Yeah. You click on that. It goes actually to their website and it tells more about the organization. And there's lots of other patterns on there oh, for okay. hats and um, cowls and scarves. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and they're all free. This yeah. is a free pattern. So, oh, I see slippers, like slipper socks. Uh-huh. A water, it looks like a water bottle cozy or something. Huh. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So um, I will. I'll report in. I have to get it done because I think we're having dinner on the September seventeenth okay. or something. So I have to. You I have, have to, to get, get going cracking. on this one. <laughs> get cracking. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, so let me just see. I think that's it all I have for projects. All right, so you had a good amount of projects, Marsha. You're, you, you're busy. I was busy, yeah. <laughs> busy knitting. <laughs> all right. Well, we have some questions from the Ravelry thread to talk about tonight. Um, Yarn Girl 52 Debbie, she asked a question about adding a zipper, adding a shoulder button band for a toddler sweater, and then finishing a button band, using a grosgrain ribbon or not, and using backer buttons or not. So I guess I'll start about the zipper. Because I have done well, and, that. And I, I'm just going to interject here to say I've done none of this. So I... <laughs> I I actually have questions about it, and I was actually really glad that she asked some of these mm-hmm. questions, especially the question about the ribbon, um, because uh, I did a little research in preparation, and one of the things they said about adding a ribbon to the button band is it will um, reduce the temptation for the sweater to gap. At, oh, okay. um, and, and I have that problem yeah. all the time with my sweaters, so... Um, I, I'm actually in, really interested in this topic, even though I have nothing to add to this topic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll do my best because I did do some research. Yeah, so. well, and anyway. you can try it maybe yeah. too and then report yeah. back in a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, we'll, so we'll start with steaking. Uh, we'll, we'll start with adding a zipper. So I was thinking, okay, so what does she mean by adding a zipper? So there's two things that could be done. One is to steak to add a zipper to a sweater that's designed as a pullover. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the other possibility of adding a zipper is adding a zipper to a sweater instead of adding a button band. Mm -hmm. And I have not steaked to add a zipper, but I have steaked. So in, when I did the uh, pillow, the Clover Bee and Reverie pillow Mm -hmm. is a color work uh, pillow. They have you do it Mona Zilla is the pattern designer, and she has you, because it's color work, she has you do it in the round. Mm-hmm. But it's not, it's just the pillow top. It's not the whole pillow. So you mm-hmm. do the pillow top in the round, but you add, like, five to seven stitches at the edge of the chart, and those are your steak stitches. And so mm-hmm. once you're done with this tube, then you stabilize the edges and then you cut like you cut it's an odd number of stitches because you're going to cut up that center stitch and so I did do that I steaked and I did a crocheted steak and I actually did it on superwash yarn which they say you're huh. only supposed to steak on really sticky yarn but it was huh. uh, neighborhood fiber company studio worsted which is a superwash oh, right. mm-hmm. so um I probably would recommend if you're going to use a superwash to not do a crochet stabilizer to do a machine stitch stabilizer before mm-hmm. you cut your stitches. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so steaking is one way to do it. And then those extra stitches that you have in the middle that you cut right up the center of, they mm-hmm. fold back like a hem kind of. Mm-hmm. And then if you sew your zipper on, you would sew your zipper, like, behind those two layers. Mm-hmm. So you'd have, like, a double layer of fabric, and then your zipper would sew on behind it. And I think it would make a really, it seems like that would make a really nice edging to the zipper. Like, kind of a, yeah. kind of a rounded or, mm-hmm. um, I want to say, like, tubular, like a tubular bind-off almost. Right mm-hmm. on on either edge of the on either edge of the zipper. So I've done I've done a steak, but not for putting a zipper in. Once I did the steak, then I just those were just the hem edges of my pillow top, and then I mm-hmm. sewed fabric onto the back. So, but I think it would make a nice edge to sew a zipper into. Yeah, if you wanted to do that. I contemplated it with my the Orcas Run sweater. The couch mm-hmm. sweater. That sweater is knit flat, but it's color work, which means you have mm-hmm. to do color work on the pearl side. Mm. Oh, right. And which is not all that fun. 
Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Especially in the places where you have three colors Mm -hmm. and you're doing color work on the knit side and then purling back to do color work on the purl side. But traditionally, the couch and sweaters were done both ways. They were done... um, Some of them who learned the Fair Isle technique because it comes from the Fair Isle technique. Um, some of the uh, Salish people who did them using the, the women who did them using the Fair Isle technique did do them in the round and sneak, and others of them did them flat. And the mm-hmm. pattern that I had was in the tradition of doing it flat. So I just followed the pattern. But if I did a second one, I think I would do it in the round and sneak it so I didn't have to do color work purling. Mm-hmm. So, so that's... So that's one way to put in a zipper. And then the other thing that I have done is with the Mealy vest, that's a pattern by Hilary Smith Callis. It had mm-hmm. button bands, and I decided I wanted a zipper vest. And I love that vest. I get a lot of wear out of it. And I get more wear out of it, I think, with the zipper than I would have with the buttons. Yeah. And it's got negative ease which with buttons would have made it gap. Mm-hmm. But with the zipper is perfect. I mean, it's exactly the fit that I wanted. Tiny little bit or maybe zero positive ease. It just got, it's just a nice, like kind of snug fitting vest. Mm-hmm. And so what I did there, I just made the, and you wouldn't have to do this. This is, doesn't have anything to do with the zipper, but I did make the button bands a little bit wider Mm-hmm. And then it had you put the collar on first. The collar is like a ribbing, and then it's folded. Mm-hmm. So you have a double layer thickness kind of stand-up collar, long stand-up collar. And you do that first, and then you put on the button band, and you pick up all the way up. So I did it in the reverse order. So I picked up for the button band first Mm -hmm. so that when I made the collar and I folded it over, it would fold over the top of the the raw edge of the zipper. Okay. Does that make sense? Do do you kind Mm -hmm. of picture that? Yeah. So, because I don't, I didn't want the top part of that zipper showing and I also didn't want it like up against my neck. Right. So, um, and then I just sewed the zipper in my, I have to say, this is probably not right. I mean, I don't think there's rules. Um, I've done enough sewing sewing that I knew how to put in a zipper. Mm -hmm. And so I just, but I sewed it in by hand. I've put in a zipper by machine too, but that's a little scary because um, if your machine gets kind of wonky because of the fabric Mm -hmm. and you get like thread barf, you know that what happens sometimes under the mm-hmm. un, on the underneath side with the bobbin mm-hmm. yeah. it's hard to get it out if it's knit yeah. fabric but i have sewn in a like you know practiced knit, uh, sewing on the knitting like on the swatch to get the tension right and sewn in a zipper by the machine but it's just easier to sew it in by hand yeah and so With my vest, I just sewed it. I had a tapestry needle that was one of those sharp ones that I talked about before that I like for Mm -hmm. weaving in-ins. I just used one of those sharp tapestry needles and yarn and sewed it in. And it worked fine. And and it stayed in. Yeah. It's it's never come come out. It's it's in and it has, you know, it has um, negative or zero positive ease. So there's tension on that zipper all the time. And it's fine. It's totally sturdy in there i just i pinned it you know pinned it really good and um then i zipped it up to make sure that it was in the right place made some adjustments and then i unzipped it and then i just sewed it down and i sewed it Mm. on the edge and then i came in a little bit from the edge and i sewed a little bit in from the edge so there wouldn't be this big floppy like I want when you sew with a machine, you kind of sew close to the, not too close to the zipper teeth, but mm-hmm. you don't sew like on the very edge of the zipper. Right. And so I sewed both places. 
I sewed on the very okay. edge of the zipper to hold the edge of the zipper to the fabric. And then I sewed closer to the zipper teeth to hold it kind of flat so that it was, the sewing was close to the zipper teeth. I love that vest, I wear it a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I also sewed in the zipper to the Orca's Run sweater. In that one, because I was gonna enter it into the fair, and I didn't think sewing it in with yarn was, quote, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I sewed it with thread, so it would be less visible. So I sewed okay. it into this, I sewed the zipper there in with thread, but I sewed it by hand. So I made little tiny stitches, you know, all around the zipper. And I think I, on that one, because the fabric was so thick, I didn't have to sew closer to the zipper teeth. I think I just sewed mm -hmm. it on the edge of the zipper. So, okay. But yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's not something to be afraid. It's especially easy if you sew it by hand, I think. I, it seems like it'd be, um, I, well, and not sewn in a long time, but it sometimes, it goes too fast. It yeah. seems like if you're sewing it by hand, you could make some adjustments yeah. to make mm -hmm. sure that the, you know, nothing's You can keep zipping it up tight. and making sure it's in the right mm -hmm. place and unzipping it again so you can sew it. Yeah. You have a lot more control. Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't show. I mean, it's, it's not ugly. It You don't see it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it actually looks very nice and neat and... So I, I would recommend, I would highly recommend sewing in a zipper and sewing it in by hand. And mm -hmm. you can even sew it with the yarn if you want, because that's what I did. It's more visible on the back side of the vest, because you can see where the, you know, where the stitches are with sewing it with yarn. But, mm -hmm. but it worked fine. So, yeah, don't be afraid to put in a zipper. Okay. That's what I would say. So sweaters that I've made, like you said, one of the things, like if you, if you use a zipper instead of the uh, buttons, especially on a, something with negative ease, you get the gap, gaposis, right? Mm -hmm. um, can you do it after the fact? Like I, sweaters that are done that I, um, that I, I guess you'd have, well, you'd have to remove, you'd have to remove the, the band, the, if you Black had kids. buttonholes, yeah, you'd definitely... You'd have to remove You'd have you'd to, have to do it, something right? with your buttonholes, yeah. You'd have to remove it and re-knit the placket and then... Yeah, I think so. ...allow for the zipper. Yeah. yeah. If you had one that you didn't have any buttonholes in, for whatever reason, like let's say you hadn't put buttons and buttonholes mm -hmm. in it, you could put a zipper in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I know that some people who have a cardigan, I've heard them, if they didn't like the gapping, they just sew the cardigan closed. Yeah, no. And then you That's... just wear it as a as a pullover. But I don't, I can't wear pullovers. No. Wool pullovers. I get too yeah. hot. I'd get too hot. Yeah, yeah. But I do. I like a zipper. The thing, though, that I would do differently about my couch and sweater, so I first put in a zipper that was the right size but the wrong color so that I could wear it to our camping trip mm -hmm. two winters ago but I knew I didn't like the color of zipper so I was just basted in and then I mm -hmm. tried to get the color zipper that I wanted and it they only had it in a too long of a size mm -hmm. so I cut the top off the zipper and then I really stitched it so that the zipper pull wouldn't come off. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of last winter, I went to zip it up and zipped the zipper pull right off of the zipper. Okay. So now I need to replace the zipper, not because I sewed it in wrong, but because it wasn't the right size and I didn't tack that tacking that is supposed to hold it so the zipper can't come off. Mm -hmm. I... Yeah, that was a problem. So one of the things that I think I would do if I made a sweater again that needed a zipper is I would first find the zipper and see what size my zipper is. And then I could mm -hmm. have adjusted my sweater more easily to match the size of the zipper mm -hmm. than find a zipper that's the right size of the sweater. Although there is a a website called zippers.com or something where you can get custom mm -hmm. size zippers. But if you just want to go to Joann's or wherever your fabric store and buy a zipper, 
you might as well make sure that your sweater, the zipper part of your sweater comes out to 16 mm -hmm. inches if there's a 16 inch zipper. Okay. And don't make it come out to be 17 inches because there's no 17 mm -hmm. inch zipper. And there, I thought there were zippers that you could, I thought there was a way you could buy a zipper that was too long and just cut it down. Well, and then there is a, yes, there was something that you, you can, and you have okay. to take that metal piece and you have to move it and crimp it on. Yeah. Or you do it with stitches, which is what I did. And okay. it didn't actually okay. work. Okay. If I had, if I had been able to like with pliers, undo that little metal piece at the top and then crimp it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would have worked. Okay. But I decided to do it with thread and it didn't work. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> Lessons learned. Yeah, putting on a zipper is not nearly as difficult as finding a zipper that's the right size. <laughs> so. And then the other part of the question was about button bands. So I have done backing buttons. I did backing mm -hmm. buttons on my funky grandpa sweat sweater i really like them um i no. why why do you like them well because i got to use twice as many <laughs> buttons from, oh that's right <laughs> from my button stash i couldn't decide which buttons to use and so mm -hmm. the ones that were small i used on the back as as backer buttons it makes the buttons feel more sturdy mm -hmm. they're not as they're not floppy Mm -hmm. I think the button band of a knitted sweater, a, a hand knit sweater, feels it feels a little floppy to me. Mm -hmm. Like the the uh, the Norwegian sweater that I have from REI, I really like the button band on that sweater because it has like a double thickness. Mm -hmm. It's a folded button band. Mm -hmm. And I like yeah. I like the idea of a folded button band, but I've never knit one. Well, and I I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna throw this out. I don't know if this is true or not. It does seem like now <clears throat> we are knitting our sweaters at a much looser gauge mm -hmm. than than like the Norwegian ones yeah. for sure. Um, and so that makes makes and if your band is at that same gauge, it's gonna be more floppy, floppy mm -hmm. and dra and drapey, right? So I wonder like this. There's um, sweaters that were knit at a tighter gauge, they probably didn't even need to have, I mean, well, they can have the backer buttons, but they probably didn't, like, we're going to talk about putting, like, a um, Grosgrain mm -hmm. ribbon on there. They probably didn't need to have, they had more, they had right. more heft mm -hmm. or substantial, because the whole sweater was more substantial. Yeah, and then um, if you did a, if you had a folded button band, like this sweater that I mm -hmm. have, even more durable. Then you really don't need anything yeah. backing it. You don't even yeah. need backer buttons, really, because it's really sturdy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I, yeah, I think if your button band feels flimsy, it's nice to put on a, a backer button. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, so the Acorn Trail sweater that I knit, one of my earliest sweaters, that sweater, the buttons are some kind of natural material. I don't know if they're stone or they're antler or what, but they're really heavy. There are some of the, I had separated out the buttons that I knew were some kind of natural material. You can just tell by the feel of it. They're not plastic. Mm -hmm. And those buttons are really heavy. And I, I did not, I was not able to find grain ribbon to put behind the buttons mm -hmm. and the button band. That was a good color. Mm -hmm. And so I just put the buttons on without it. And those buttons are way too heavy for that button band. And that yarn is crisp. <laughs> crisp. <laughs> Crunchy. It has some, it has some heft. It's like it. a, I mean, I think it's a Harris Tweed. I I, I don't know because it was d stash yarn, but... It's got the Kemp in it, and it's itchy, and it's, yeah. <laughs> and I and I plied it. It was singles that I plied together. So that yarn has some sturdiness to it. Mm -hmm. and But that button band is still too floppy for yeah. the weight of the buttons. So in that case, a, a Grosgrain ribbon button band would be important. And I haven't done it. I haven't, I don't wear that sweater hardly at all. 
So mm-hmm. that's it's too it's just too itchy. <laughs> Plus, well, and the buttons are falling off. I mean, that's part of the problem. Not only are they floppy, but they're starting to come off because they weren't solidly, you know, they weren't secured. So I have to mm-hmm. I have to do some mending to that sweater. So that's what I would say about grow grain ribbon. You don't always need it, but if you want to prevent gaps or if your buttons are heavier and mm-hmm. your yarn is kind of floppy, it's kind of a good way to make it more sturdy. Yeah. But I haven't ever done it. Just full disclosure, as Marcia says, <laughs> I've never done a grow grain ribbon on a on a sweater. I'm just looking at your gardening at 90 sweater, which is your acorn. Yeah, thing. yeah. No, that thing will last forever, we, but the buttons... We did those together. Mm-hmm. We did that in 2014. Yeah. Hmm. I need to get that sweater out and get the get the buttons fixed. Well, and I the thing about that sweater, and this has nothing to do with the button band necessarily, but the buttonholes, the, the, the directions for the buttonholes were ridiculous. It was just you made a yarn over. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. a yarn over knit two together, and you can't even find, uh, on my sweater, I can't even yeah. find. I the, made I mine bigger because you did yours first and complained about it, yeah. Yeah, it was, it's, yeah. No, I, I... I think if you're using a nice crunchy wool, mm-hmm. afterthought buttonholes are the way to go. Yeah, yeah. That was a pretty, pretty slick trick. From that was in the funky grandpa, and I can't remember who. Somebody has an afterthought buttonhole tutorial out there, because it was referenced in the pattern. But anyway, yeah, that was good. So, do you want to talk about the ribbon then? So yeah, I. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we no, we're not done. We were going to talk about um, the her, her her other question was the um, shoulder band um, for like a child sweater. Yeah. So the I was thinking about that, and I haven't ever done that either. But it got me thinking about, and I started trying to figure out what it was called. You know, the neckline of like onesies, mm-hmm. and. And so I started Googling different things. Anyway, finally I found what you have to call it. It's called an envelope neckline. Okay. I don't think that's what... I don't think that that, that's what Debbie meant. No, because like a onesie, an envelope, is like the the shoulder, like like the fabric crosses. Yeah, yeah. And so then you can pull it apart, but then it closes up to cover up the shoulder. Yeah, so, so that's a little yeah. different thing. But there are some patterns about that, like that. And I did find, um, I did find patterns with that envelope neckline. But then that led me to, okay, wait, that's not the real thing. What what we need is a a shoulder uh, a shoulder button band. But so I did find something called the bluebell pullover, that does go up to toddler sizing, but it has that envelope neckline. Um, and then the other pattern that I found, and you have to you have to go look at the website, Marsha, that I linked to for the Diggory sweater. Okay. It has the buttons on the shoulder. And what I would suggest is if you want to add buttons to a shoulder of a toddler sweater that you already have, this is a free pattern, the Diggory. And you can take mm-hmm. a look at it and see... First of all, the the picture of the baby, the very the baby, <laughs> that that frowning it's face is the yeah, little just frowning face cracked me yes. up. This baby is frowning <laughs> so bad in this picture. <laughs> yeah, but um, it's a free pattern, and then you can take a look at it and you can see how that neckline is done and kind of use that to hack your pattern. I don't think this pattern's free. Uh, it's a br- diggery diggery. It is mine. Um, it says uh, six dollars. Oh, I thought it was a free pattern. Oh, I don't know how that happened. I thought I was getting a free pattern. So I went in and I put in shoulder button bands, shoulder buttons, toddler sweater or something like that, and I did a search. But this is the cutest. <laughs> that baby's picture is so. You cute. have to buy. You have to pay six dollars for this pattern because of that baby. Well, it's all cabled. It's a, it's a really fancy sweater. My point was that you could find a free yeah. pattern that mm-hmm. has that, and then you get the free pattern and you look at it, and kind of analyze how they do it, and then that you can use that to hack the sweater that you have. 
But I think if you were making a bottom-up sweater, it would be not too not too bad, pretty straightforward. You would just get to the one shoulder and instead of binding, you know, instead of joining the two shoulders together at the top, you would just make a button band on each one and then put in buttons and buttonholes. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to look and see if I can find a free pattern. Maybe I just got too enamored by this frowning baby. The baby. <laughs> I, I could have sworn I put free pattern into the Ravelry search engine, the advanced search. But So that's what I did. Shoulder buttons, toddler sweater, free pattern into the advanced search, and I found it. But that's what I do a lot when I want to hack a pattern a little bit. Mm -hmm. I find another pattern that's free that does... It's not the pattern I'm looking at, but it does kind of the same thing. I have also bought patterns that had the technique I wanted and then mm -hmm. merged them together. But first I'll look to see if I can find a free one. Yeah, yeah. So that's, I don't know if that's helpful at all, but if you're doing a bottom-up sweater, I think it would be really simple to make one of the shoulders just have buttons mm -hmm. so you can make that neck neck bigger for a toddler. Or you could use the bluebell pullover. Maybe that's the free one. Oh, here. Let me look. Nope. That one's $7. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought I was looking for free patterns. <laughs> Apparently I was not doing a very good job of that. It doesn't matter. You're supporting a designer. How's that? Yeah, yeah. So... Once you kind of know the technique, you can then, like, merge the patterns together and make a hack. That would be my suggestion. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, I... Now, so now the ribbon mm -hmm. on the band. I, I've never done this, and I, as I said, I was really glad to get the question because I think it would probably solve the problem I have with my... Um, cardigans gap gaping yeah um, and so as I say I've not done it before but I did look online and olive knit so I put the link in the show notes but there's a um, directions about how to add ribbon to the button band and the, the buttonhole band um, the and then there's another one um, Ms. Cleaver dot com has an article in there about uh, putting uh, ribbon putting ribbon on your sweater. So there's links in both of those. One thing I they I both I noticed on both of them is they it looks like they don't put the buttonholes in. They just um, they don't put the buttons or the buttonholes in when they're knitting the band. Okay. They put they put the ribbon on and then they machine. Um, oh. They use the sewing machine to make the buttonholes. Oh, and okay. I know. And so I was like, hmm. That sounds Is scary. there a way? I know. Um, so I don't know. I, I need to do a little bit more, more research to see if there's a way that you can put the button band, or excuse me, put the ribbon on the buttonhole side and not make, uh, like, hand stitch it somewhere that you already have. If you already have a buttonhole mm -hmm. now, after the fact, can you go back and put ribbon on the back of your sweater? So I have um, heard of fact. people doing that where mm -hmm. they put either they just put ribbon on the button side and mm -hmm. not on the buttonhole side. Because there's a limit to how much thickness you want to add. That's true. Um, so I've seen that. And then I've also heard people talk about putting the ribbon on the buttonhole side by putting it between the buttonholes. So you don't have to make a buttonhole in your ribbon or make a machine buttonhole in your ribbon and your oh, sweater. So it just is in, in, like, as you're going up the column of buttonholes, it's just smaller pieces of ribbon. Small sections mm -hmm. of, uh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But again, every time you, every time your ribbon ends, you're going to have it folded over, right? A little hem. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to add mm -hmm. bulk. And you're 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 going to have isn't the idea is to have the buttonholes and the button stabilized by the woven fabric. Yeah, I think you so would still you stabilize things with the with mm -hmm. 
ribbon, even if it had, even if you left openings for the buttonholes, I think you would still get the stabilizing effect. Okay. But not maybe not as much, but I think you still get quite a bit of stabilizing. Mm-hmm. But you're right, yeah. It would be more stabilizing if you made buttonholes. Yeah. In, or you could make buttonholes in the ribbon that match the buttonholes that you made in your knitting. I, I really don't like the idea of making a buttonhole in knitted fabric. In your hand knit fabric? No, it, it sort of makes my um, um, skin crawl <laughs> thinking yeah, about it. Sewing buttonholes yeah. was always one of those things where it's like, okay, let's pray to the sewing gods that mm. I don't get a big <laughs> giant barf of <laughs> thread mm-hmm. from my machine trying to make these buttonholes. Yeah. Of course, everybody has newer machines than we have nowadays. I guess probably. that's true. Yeah. But still, you're, um, yeah. I don't know. So I'm going to do some more uh, research on this because okay. there's got to be uh, more. I was surprised how few YouTube videos were about this, too. I didn't find very Maybe many. Maybe people don't do it very much. Mm-hmm. That's possible. But if, I mean... You would, for, for, now, for gaping, though, you would want it on the buttonhole side. Mm-hmm. I would think you'd want it on the buttonhole side more. If you had to pick a side, pick the buttonhole yeah. side. I think it would gape mm-hmm. less. And unless, is there any other way you the, we know of to, when you make a cardigan, that you, if you don't put a ribbon on there, that it's not going to gape? Well, you would want a firmer gauge and maybe a, well, a doubled button band. Okay. That's what I would say. But, you know, if you did those button bands in between the buttonholes, mm-hmm. but on the side of the buttonholes, you sewed them together, like mm-hmm. by hand, just hands whip stitched them. So you have so you have a strip of grosgrain ribbon, your buttonhole, the strip of grosgrain ribbon, Right, so that it's like mm-hmm. butted up against each other, but it's open mm-hmm. and hemmed, you know, turned under. And then for the section, I don't know if I can describe this in a way that will be visual for people who are just listening. So in the section where the button goes through, there's a gap, right? There's an opening. Mm-hmm. But right after that, where the button is not going to be, so on the other side of the buttonhole, if you just whip stitched the two hemmed edges of your grosgrain ribbon together, mm-hmm. so they're butted up yeah. against each other, I think that would mm-hmm. be fairly stable. Uh, it'd probably yeah, be really probably. stable because you have the doubled mm-hmm. grosgrain ribbon sewn together. All of that mm-hmm. is adding bulk and stability. Yeah. Again, I have no real experience with this at all this is just conjecture but i Mm -hmm. think it would work i'm gonna maybe i'll try it on my acorn trail if i could just find the right color of grosgrain ribbon i'll try it on my acorn trail i'll put or find something that complements it well i yeah i tried and i i need to go someplace other than our joann's yeah uh maybe i'll go on i should go online and look or something they had not the right color of green and nothing that was a good compliment. Mm-hmm. So I've been there a couple times looking for ribbon. There's places online that just sell ribbon. So, yeah. But that, that would be a good thing for me to try for that sweater because it, it does need something, at least for the button band, the side that has the buttons on it. And if I did something on the button band side, then I could report back. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's what I'll do. Well, and maybe I will experiment too because I have. Um, oh, what did I make the? Um, is it Little Wave? Um, mm-hmm. Out of the uh, um, Neighborhood Fiber Company. Oh, right. And and that has a lot of ease. That is not a tight sweater, and it, it gapes like crazy. Hmm. I hardly ever wear it. I mean, I love the feel of it, but yeah. I don't wear it because it's, um, I don't think it's very flattering. When you button it. Okay. Yeah. So that's a project for us. 
Yeah. So I. Oh yeah, Little Wave. That's who. Who, who did this? Oh, Gud- Gudrun. Gudrun Johnson. Johnston. Okay. It's her pattern. Yeah. But I wonder if I could add. Um, I bet you could. Do you like what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah. 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 So, Debbie, we talked a lot about your questions, even though we don't we have any experience. It. <laughs> <laughs> Just shows we can talk about anything forever. We, can we don't need to be a experts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But hopefully you got okay. some good ideas about... That'll teach people to ask us <laughs> right, questions. Right. <laughs> <laughs> No, ask us questions because it makes us think. Yeah, and, no, it's fun. Um, and I am kind of now thinking I might um, rethink this one sweater. I have a, I have a. Well, you know, I got into the habit of not making cardigans with buttons because I didn't like that. Yeah, if you uh, could solve that, that problem, you would. Yeah, be I would to... totally make cardigans yeah. with buttons. So, okay, all right. Well, Marsha. Okay. Have we reached the end? It's way past my bedtime. <laughs> it's way past my bedtime, too. And I don't have to get up and teach in the morning. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Well, I will let you okay. go, and we'll talk in two weeks. All righty. All righty. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit 2 com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion, and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the two yous doing doing our our part part for World Fleece. Fleece.